Alrighty, welcome back, boys and girls. It's your main math man, Mr. Shank, coming to you live from Alameda International High School. During Spirit Week, you can hear that music bumping. We're trying to close out the week strong. We're working with that quiz number five, and we're saying, okay, what can we do? Well, we're going to find the surface area and volume of this pyramid. Make sure you first trace the base, redraw the base. And I'm saying, hey, I have a square base since each of these side lengths are the same. That means I can find the area of the base, which is big B. I gotta multiply the two side lengths together. So I'm gonna say the area of the base is gonna be four, and the perimeter of the base is going to be adding up all the sides, which is going to be eight. Then I can say, well, I have my vertical height, my vertical height, which is H, is going to be three. However, I need to have my slant height, which is kind of going along this outside amount. I can draw this right triangle to go along with it. So make sure you draw your right triangle and say, okay, I know my vertical height is three. However, I have to say, again, notice how I'm, ha I'm using this right triangle in the center. Since it's in the center of the base, I have to say this other leg is going to be one since it is half of this base length. And I'm saying my hypotenuse for this right triangle is going to be my slant height L. So again, make sure you're finding your slant height, which is L. Again, make sure you use your Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I have 1 squared plus 3 squared is equal to L squared. Make sure you are taking those exponents. You're not multiplying by 2, but you're saying 1 times 1 is 1, 3 times 3 is 9, and we can say this is still L squared. So then I have 10 equals L squared. That means when I take the square root of both sides, I can say this is going to be about 3.16. So once I have my labels, I can now use my formula. So I'm going to say my surface area of this pyramid is going to be as follows. I have the slant height L times the perimeter of the, the base P divided by 2 plus the area of the base big B. Substitute in your values for your variables. So I have L as 3.16, I have perimeter base which is 8, and I divide that by 2 and add the area of the base which is 4. So I should end up with a grand total of about 16.65, I say my units, centimeters, and I say squared, meaning to the second power since we're talking about a area. Make sure you see for that volume, I can say volume is still going to be the area of the base times the height divided by 3. And so I can use my labels that I have. So I have 4 times 3 over 3, which is just going to be 4 centimeters cubed. So make sure, again, that you have your labels. You have surface area is going to be second power, and volume is going to be third power. Similar setup for that bottom one. For number two, it says find the surface area and volume of that cone. So similar setup, make sure you can trace the base, redraw the base. Make sure you're saying, okay, hey, this is going to be our radius R, and this is gonna be our vertical height H. Make sure you find the area of the base, again, big B, which is the area of the base, is gonna be pi times the radius squared. So this is gonna be about, we can say big B is gonna be about 12.56. Make sure you still draw your right triangle to have your slant height. So I can have my hypotenuse is L, my vertical height is 3, and the other leg this time is going to be 2 since it's already halfway across the base. So I can set it up like this. I have 2 squared plus 3 squared is going to be equal to L squared. And I can say I have 4 plus 9 equals L squared. So I'm going to say this is going to be 13, which is L squared. Take the square root of both sides. And I can say L is going to be about 3.6. Make sure you use your formula. So I'm going to say surface area of this cone. Again, different formula from our pyramid. But it's going to be the area of the base, which is big B, plus the area of the lateral face which is going to be pi times the radius times the slant height, L. So I have surface area is equal to, we're going to say about 12.56, plus 
we have pi times the raise, which is 2, times that 3.6, which is L. When you add these all together, you should get about 35.22, and I can say feet squared. Volume is super simple because it's the same formula as a, as a pyramid, but make sure you say it since our area of the base is a different figure, make sure that you're finding that first. So I can have this going to be about 12.56 times the height, which is 3, divided by 3. And again, real simple, this is going to be volume equals 12.56. I can say feet cubed. So again, make sure you're using those values for yourself and make sure you're using those formulas carefully. On the back, for some unit conversions, make sure careful there. Make sure that you set it up like a nice little table. Again, make sure you multiply your numerators together, multiply your de denominators together, and then divide. So again, I start with 42 inches. And I'm going to say, okay, I have to work on the diagonal. So that means I'm going to have one inch in my denominator, and then I have the conversion in the column. So I'm going to say it's going to be 2.54 uh, centimeters. Make sure that you're canceling out your units so that way you can get your conversion. Since I only have one in the denominator, I can just multiply across. So when I multiply those together, let me actually pull up the side real quick. When I multiply those together, I should end up with 106.68 and then I say centimeters. Similar setup, make sure that you build your table first. So I'm going to say I have, I start out with 71 miles for every one hour. So now make sure you work on the diagonal. So I need to go from miles to kilometers. So I have for every one mile, I have 1.609 kilometers. Cancel out your units, move to the next conversion. For every one hour, notice how it's in the numerator. Because I have to cancel it out for every one hour, there's 60 minutes, which is our next conversion, and I'm good. And make sure you multiply in the numerators first. So I have 114.239 divided by 60. Again, 1 times 1 times 60 is just 60. Once you divide it out, I should end up with 1.09398 with that 3 repeating. Make sure you put your units. So I'm going to say kilometers per minute. You're going to make sure you're building your table like I did. Multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, and make sure you divide. Underneath of it, when we are factoring, again, make sure that you're dividing each term in the polynomial by the greatest common factor. Again, it's essentially like you're undoing the foiling or you're undoing the distributed property. So that means this, I can divide each of these terms by three. So that means I have a three on the outside. Once I divide by three, I have just a two X and I have a three. Because we have, again, you can always check by multiplying it out. Three times two X is six X and three times nine, is, or sorry, three times three is nine. So again, I always check by uh, multiplying it out. For the next one, Again, you should always build your foundation first, so I have x and x like this. I can say, hey, I have my product is 24 and my sum is 10. So I need two numbers multiplied together to give me uh, positive 24. That means that both of these signs are going to be the same. And then we look at the sum to say, hey, both of them are going to be positive since our sum is positive as well. So again, make sure you use those clues together to be able to have your signs. So I can say maybe 6 and 4 would work out. Again, 6 plus 4 is 10. 6 times 4 is 24, so I know that one's good. Similar setup for number 7. You could say our product is negative 15, or sum is positive 2. Build your foundations at x times another x. 
Since our product is negative, that means these two signs are going to be different. Since our sum is positive, that means that the larger number has to go to the positive. So two numbers multiply together to get 15 could be 5 and 3. Again, since their sum is positive 2, that means that the positive has to go with 5. And I can say for number 8, this is going to be a difference of squares, which just means this. Again, it has to be the same value because I'm taking the square root of 81, and I know that my product is negative, so that means different signs. The square root of 81 is just 9. Again, that middle term has to be 0 because when you add those two together, they should cancel out. So again, make sure you're seeing those examples that I had on the vocab sheet. Be sure to ask questions, and as always, super slam that subscribe button.